All right, so what you're going to work on for this class is a lab inside of Moodle, and I'll just scroll down to show you here. It's the Virtual Seismology Lab. When you first click on this, you may not get the same window here. If it doesn't work, uh, don't panic. Hopefully it does. Uh, but remember that you do have to use Internet Explorer. We're, uh, I'm going to go through the demonstration for you, so you don't need to go through that. Uh, if you want to go through it, of course you can. But I'm going to skip to the travel time, and we're also going to follow that with the epicenter and magnitude. So travel time, when you click on that, you'll get another pop-up. And again, your pop-up might not work perfectly. It looks like this one actually did for the most part. Hmm. Ah, yes. But I do have uh, a security warning. And so I'm going to click Don't Block. Obviously, we, we want to actually run this thing. And when you click that, you'll also have to click Run. Don't click the Update button. Click Run. Okay, that's what we're looking for. We've got the buttons appearing. You might not have the buttons if your uh, zoom level is not set to 100%. Uh, in fact, I think the default is like 85%. At least it was on mine. So if it appears cut off, just change it to 100% or just click on it. I think that sets the default to 100 when you click on it. All right, so if you've got everything set up, we're off to a good start. And let's click the Start button. So you get another pop-up. This gives instructions, which I'm going to go through. So the main panel, uh, toolbox, instructions, and the work area where, you, where you'll record your data. Click Close. And we'll jump right in here. Uh, actually, we can just work our way through here. And you can see we've got the same buttons on the right-hand panel as well, too. All right, Move Station. So what we're doing is that's our earthquake location okay that's the epicenter uh, what we're or explosion what we're going to do is we're going to position our seismograph stations i'll put one a long ways away and i'll just move them kind of i don't know randomly uh, we'll get closer and closer we'll get one quite close and i'm going to put one way over here as well too okay you can see the trigger explosion uh popped up and so i'll click on that and I'm not sure if you heard that or not but you actually do get uh, uh, the sound of a simulated explosion Okay, so we're done. First step is done. Second is to measure and record the SP lag time. So we've got primary and secondary waves. And if we take a look at this, we can see that the primary waves, of course, arrive first, followed by the secondary waves. Primary waves move faster as they travel through the Earth, and so they arrive sooner at the destination. And we'll look at that in more detail coming up. You can see we're on station one. And so what I'm going to do is click and drag. It's that simple. Make sure you go right from the very front of this wave to the very front of this wave, okay, from, from the front of the primary to the front of the secondary. And it's given us a lag time of 33 seconds. And so all we do is we type in 33 seconds. And again, that time represents how long you'd have to wait from the primary to the secondary waves. Incidentally, just by point of uh, curiosity, the earthquake alarm or siren that we have in the hallways, it detects the primary waves, which you wouldn't normally feel because they're, uh, it might just be a slight vibration. But it picks those up, and it begins to uh, sound the alarm, uh, even though we don't feel anything yet. And time ticks by. This is this is the this is actually scrolling. It's a piece of paper that scrolls through a seismograph. And as it gets to to this point, where the start of the primary or secondary waves hit, that's where the shaking really begins. Okay. Anyway, more on that later. Let's go to uh, two, and you can see this is the one that was very close. Uh, so we're going to click and drag like that. And it's tough to be exact here, but I'm going to put 10.7 for two. Okay, we'll go to the third one. Don't forget to put your name in. All right, it wants distance next. And so all we do is we click on the distance icon. And we'll start with number one. And we simply drag like this. And try and get it as aligned through the center as possible for that uh, seismograph station. So one is going to be 323 kilometers. Two is going to be right through the middle again, 101. 
Again, you want to try to be fairly precise with these. 3 is going to be uh, 213. 4 is going to be 325. And last but not least, 5 is going to be 438 kilometers. So you could ask yourself, which of these stations would you rather be at? Uh, and remember, in the station number 2, when we saw that one, uh, it was... It was actually a huge graph, and we'll see what that means coming up soon. Okay, so we should be good here. Let's verify the data. Hope we're okay. And we get a little pop-up, and it says your entries in the data field are all correct, but you still need to do these uh, last tasks. So we got to plot the points. And all we do with this is drag over to here. And, and so we're looking for a distance of 323 kilometers, distance being on the x-axis down here. Y-axis is the SP lag time, 33 seconds. So... Let's give that a go. 323 we want. And you can see it actually shows it. 323, we got to go way up. Oh, 323, 33. There we go. And it kind of snaps to the right position, which does help you out a bit. 101 we want. And we got 10.7 seconds. There it is. 101, 10.7. 213, 22. Two thirteen. Got to go a little higher. There we go. Two thirteen twenty two. Three twenty five. Thirty three. Okay. Three twenty five. Thirty three. Almost over top the other one. That's all right. Four thirty eight. Forty four point five. Four thirty eight. Forty four point five. There we go. Verify the points, just like before. You'll get a little pop-up. If you've done it correctly, it'll tell you that. And it gives you your final tasks. So now we have to fit the line to the plotted points. And you're going to drag this down. I don't know, like that. You want to just go through as many of these points as possible. Let's verify it. And quite often, it I keep getting this message, you need to decrease your error sum of squares. What I find is if you just drop this a little bit lower, verify it. Uh, oh, we still got a decrease. Okay, that's all right. We'll drop it a little more. Uh, oh, slope is incorrect. And if you've done it right, you'll get uh, you'll get this message. The slope of your line is a reasonable fit to the points that you've plotted. You still need to, of course, do the following. All right. And if we scroll down, we just have to answer these questions. What is the distance of a station from the epicenter if the SP lag time is measured to be 20.8 seconds? So we're going to look along the y-axis. We want to go to 20.8. And we can see we've got a distance of 202 kilometers. Given that a station is 277 kilometers from the epicenter, let's just do that. What would be the SP lag time? And it says, if I can read that right, 28.6 seconds. I'm going to verify the answers. And hopefully you'll get something that says uh, your answers are both correct. You've completed this activity. Use the print and save buttons as needed. I would like you to save this, okay, and then upload the file. So when you click Save, all you're going to do is save the session, upload that to Moodle for the first part, and you are done. Okay, so... Uh, we can actually quit. We're finished here once you've uh, saved it. It says, do you really want to quit? Uh, yeah, go ahead. You can quit. And we're back to here. So the next thing to work through is the epicenter and magnitude. So I'm going to work through this one as well, too. You can get the first exercise done and come back to this video if you like. Or just figure it out yourself. You don't have to use this video. Okay, now again, you're going to get a pop-up most likely. Don't block it, of course. Uh, you might get a second one that says, do you want to run it? Yeah, well, of course we want to run it. Click Run. And there we go. Now, there's two buttons we're going to need here, the Start Activity and eventually the Quiz. But let's work through the activity first. This one may take a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to cover most of the stuff that's in here. Again, the main panel, toolbox, instructions, and work area. We'll click Close. Okay, choose an earthquake to work with and trigger the earthquake. So we'll clear, trigger the earthquake. Okay, there we go. Make sure you put your name in here. 
Uh, and now we want to measure SP lag time. So we just click the icon. And station one, yeah, I'll take this station. Sure, looks fine to me. SP lag time for station number one. Okay, I've got station one selected. SP lag time is 25.3. And don't worry about the distance yet. We're going to pick any three. I'm just going to have a look at, oh, wow, this thing's huge. Let's take this station, actually. Uh, although I can't tell where the secondary waves begin. I think it's here. <laughs> Hard to tell. You know what we're going to do is we're going to change the scale here. I'm going to drop it down to like 50%. See if no, it didn't help us. This one might be too close. Oh, yeah, that works. Okay, so it looks like the secondary waves. Now, you know what? I'm not going to use this one. Too hard to tell. Go to station three, four. I want to get some variety here. Five. Oh, yeah, this looks good. Okay, so we're going to drag from here to here. SP lag time is 16.3. This is station five. Don't forget to put the number in. 16.3, and I like, like to find one that's fairly close if I can find another one. That's too far. A little too far. Okay, we're going to live on the edge and try that station too. I, I don't know how this is going to work out. There's almost no delay between the primary and secondary waves. Uh, I'm just going to go like that. And I think that's probably it. We'll go station two. And I'm going to go 2.3 seconds. I'm not sure if that's correct. But I'm not going to worry too much about it. Okay, so next thing is uh, we need the distance in kilometers. And actually, no, sorry, let's do the amplitude first. We'll click there. And it says the seismogram is going off of the screen. Use the scale pull down to decrease the scale. Okay, we'll do that. So can we go lower? We go to 5% and it's still off the screen. Wow. Okay. Uh, you are now at the lowest possible. Use a different station. Okay. So it's telling us we can't use that station. Uh, I don't know. Let's just take number nine. So we're changing from station two to station nine. But just know that you do have that scale there if you need to use it. And whoopsie, I've got to use the right button though. And we want to use the SP lag time button because we're starting again with Station number nine, and our lag time is 43.1 seconds. Now we'll work on the amplitude. So we click the amplitude button, and we're going to go over to station one. We'll start all over here. We're going to start at the top row down here, station one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually increase this to maybe 300%. Now I'll go even higher. Five, there we go. And now if we drag, what we're trying to do is get the height as accurately as possible of the amplitude of the wave, the maximum amplitude, which is 3.2 millimeters. Go to station five. That's our next station that we uh, picked to work with. Again, I'm going to increase the scale. We'll go th 300, maybe a little bit high. Let's go to 200. We click and drag, and our amplitude is 8.2. Finally, we'll go to the third one. We expect a low amplitude because of the distance uh, or because of the lag time. We don't know the distance yet. The lag time is quite significant for station nine. So let's go to station nine. We're going to have to bump this up to like 900%, maybe 1,000%. There we go. And it is 0.6 millimeters. Okay. All right. We're done that step, hopefully. Let's take a look at... Uh, Let's calculate the distance. So to calculate that, what we do is we look at the SP lag time and the amplitude. Sorry, to calculate the distance, all we need is the SP lag time. It's it. So we're going to go 20. We're going to lift this up to 25.2. Okay, 25.3. Sorry, close enough. Uh, that gives a distance of 246 kilometers. Next one is 16.3. Distance 158, 43.1, distance 421. And we need to figure out the magnitude. So to do that, start dragging until the distance matches your calculated distance.
So we've got one at 246, or uh, sorry, station. We want to select the station and drag the correct distance. We didn't use uh, two, so we can ignore that one. Station one was should be 246. There it is. Station five, which is uh, right here, should be 158. And station nine, which is over here, should be 421. Okay, there we go. Now, what we've got is a point right here, uh, where which would be uh, the intersection of all three of the circles. And that tells us where the epicenter occurred. So what we can do is go on to the next little number here, and we're going to move this E to where you think the epicenter is based upon the circle intersections. Looks to me like it should be right about there. Okay. We can't quite fill in the magnitude yet, but that's coming up. Uh, okay, so it wants us to do the longitude and latitude. Students often get frustrated with this. There's the E, and it's overlaying the longitude and latitude. So what we do is we look at, first of all, latitude, and we know that we're just under 35 degrees north. You can see the center of this circle is just below that, and we're going to work with the center of the epicenter. So it's going to be 34 degrees. And I'm going to set this to north, but we also need to put the minutes in. And the way it works is, is this, this line is 34. It's just like real minutes. There's 60 of them, 15, 30, 45, 60. This is just a few under. If that's the 45 line, this is going to be like the 55 line or something. I don't know, maybe even 57. Okay, and it's, it's an approximation. We don't really know for sure. Okay, ne next we're going to work on the latitude, or sorry, longitude. And we can see that we're between 116 and 117. So it's going to be 116. It's a little bit more than 116, but it's less than 117. And we're pretty much right on the first line, which, as you might recall, represents 15 minutes. Okay? So I'll put the 15 in there. And it tells us, the W tells us that it's west. Let's see if we got this right. Uh, it says, please fill in all the fields in the data. Okay, we have one more to fill in, and that is magnitude. So we're going to use this line, and using the data that we've already entered, distance, 246, we're going to enter that on the, left, on the left side, 246. And we're going to enter our amplitude, 3.2 here. Go slide up till we hit 3.2. And we look at where it intersects, uh, intersects the Richter magnitude, and it looks like to me it's 4. Point, say, 2 or 3. That's 4.5. It's like 4. Point, I'm just going to put 4.3. Okay, we're also going to do 16.3 for SP lag time. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to do 158. There we go. For our distance, for station number 5. And our amplitude is 8.2. There's 8.2. And again, we're at 4.25, but we'll round up to 4.3. Hopefully it likes this. Uh, last one is station nine, 421 kilometers, long ways away. Our amplitude is only 0.6. Now, if you notice with the first two, the magnitude is consistent regardless of the distance away. So in other words, the magnitude of the earthquake doesn't change because you're further away. You just don't feel it as much. And so the amplitude of the seismogram is going to be uh, smaller. The amplitude which reflects the, uh, the amount of energy that's being released. Okay, so uh, we've got this set, and it looks like we're about the same spot there again, and uh, we'll just go with 4. Point, uh, maybe 4.2. It looks closer to 4.2 to me. Let's see what happens if we verify this. Uh, oh, we've completed. How about that? And now it's going to tell us to click here to continue, which we'll do. Put your name in. And you're going to need the class code, which uh, can be found inside of Moodle. The virtual seismology, that, whoops, not there. You're going to find it right here. Virtual seismology, quiz certificate results, and upload. And there it is. We'll just highlight that and copy it. Back we go. Place that into class code. Click Submit. Is this correct? Yep, looks good to me. 
That way I can check your scores and you're going to work through and answer the questions. All right. Hopefully everything works fine for you. Uh, best of luck. Over and out.